Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Rolene Marks. This is The Israel Brief, where we bring you the top stories making headlines every Monday to Thursday. And we are continuing with our ongoing coverage of Operation Swords of Iron, Israel's war with Hamas. So today, the big story we have to discuss is what happened with the Al-Akhli Hospital in Gaza. Now, the world media, many politicians, many pundits were quick to jump on social media once they heard that a hospital in Gaza had been struck, immediately jumped to conclusions and blamed Israel. Hamas said that the health ministry had said that uh, the hospital had been struck by Israeli ordnance and 500 people were killed. This was immediately after the fact. Now, let's examine the evidence because when events like this happen, especially in a region that is a tinderbox and, and could flare up beyond what has already happened in a matter of seconds, it is so important to consider the evidence. So let's backtrack. At 6.59 Israel time, Palestinian Islamic Jihad fire a massive salvo of rockets towards Israel. At seconds past them firing the rockets, the hospital explodes. Now, earlier today, Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, he is the chief spokesman for the IDF, presented to the international press their, firing, their findings, their investigation. So let's take a look at incident by incident. So we have this firing of, of rockets and we have uh, something um, landing on the hospital and setting it ablaze. The IDF immediately started investigations and according to the evidence they have presented, which was taken from aerial photographs, the, the drone footage and footage from nearby Netiva Sarah, the kibbutz uh, that was nearly absolutely destroyed during the massacre on September, I mean on October the 7th, we see quite clearly the rockets being fired and something falling down. So the belief and the conclusion by the IDF investigation is that it was a rocket that misfired and, and, and landed short. We know that Palestinian Islamic Jihad, which is the baby brother terrorist organization of Hamas, along with Hamas, hide their weapons and fire their salvos from within civilian infrastructure. We still don't know what the official de uh, death toll is. How did Hamas know minutes later that it was 500 people killed in the hospital? Some of the other evidence presented by the IDF today was that there was no crater. If there was IDF ordnance dropped from above, the, the blast, the strength of the blast would have left a massive crater in the ground. There was no crater. So military professionals have said that the type of damage was consistent with a smaller warhead with uh, its attached fuel load, which ignited its attached fuel load. We also have footage taken by Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera, a uh, TV station that is known for spreading Hamas propaganda and is vehemently anti-Israel, for some reasons had their cameras trained on the Gaza Strip. And you can see quite clearly that the, um, the trajectory of rockets launched did that. They arced up and not downwards. So you can see that these were launched from within the Gaza Strip. Now, in addition to this, the IDF have released classified information. This is an intercepted recorded conversation between Hamas operatives, which clearly says, you know, uh, it, it looks like it was one of ours. It seemed to have uh, landed on the hospital. Uh, you know, it's... You know, this is where it happened to land. And they, they happen to say, God bless, this is where it landed. Now, we know that terrorists are playing an expert game at public relations. That they count on masses of casualties from within their own um, civilian infrastructure. So that it gains for them the sympathy of the world. I hold 
news outlets like the BBC, Sky News and, and many others, as well as political leaders who all jumped to conclusions and blamed Israel, condemning Israel for a strike on a hospital. It is an absolute imperative it's an imperative that we examine evidence first before we jump to conclusions, especially in such a, um, a, a tense wartime situation. Uh, Real Admiral Hagari also presented a map of Gaza showing clearly where rockets have fallen short during the last uh, now nearly two weeks. We know from past flare-ups with Hamas, uh, and given that this is not a flare-up, this is an all-out war, that rockets have fallen short numerous times which have cost Palestinians their lives. So I implore you, before believing anything that the media says, wait for the evidentiary support. Meanwhile, in the uh, latest developments, Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister of Britain, has announced that the evidence that the IDF have has been given to British intelligence and they are analysing it as well. Italy's Foreign Minister says Hamas should be punished for this strike that killed civilians. US President Joe Biden, in his remarks to Prime Minister Netanyahu when he landed earlier today, more about that a little later, said it, is, it looks like it's not you guys. He used the, the term, it looks like it was uh, the other team. Personally, I would have called the terrorists out by their names. And uh, Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, says, you know, these firing these um or striking a hospital is absolutely unacceptable, but also appeal to people to wait for the evidence. British Foreign Secretary James Cleverly said, cool heads must prevail, we must have evidentiary support. Now, while some news channels have walked back their uh, accusations, the damage has already been done. We've already seen mass protests break out across the region and in Beirut, uh, protesters set fire to the US embassy. So always, always, no matter what subject it is, whether it is Israel and the Palestinians, whatever the subject is, always examine the evidence. It is crucial. Um, I don't think I'm being dramatic when I say lives are at stake. We've seen the massive rise in anti-Semitism around the world, how violent some of these rallies and protests are. So before jumping to conclusions, always examine the evidence. Now on to the other top story for the day. U.S. President Joe Biden landed in Israel just after 10 a.m. this morning. He is here to meet with Prime Minister Netanyahu as well as President Herzog and various other officials. The president has requested to meet with Rachel Edry. She is one of the survivors of the uh, horrific, brutal massacre that took place on the 7th of October, as well as the families of Israelis and foreign nationals that have been taken hostage. We cannot forget at all times that there are 200 Israelis and foreign nationals that are being held hostage by terror group Hamas. Now, in his meeting today with Prime Minister Netanyahu, his opening statements, he praised Israel's people saying, you know, our courage is absolutely extraordinary. This is the first time, and, and the Prime Minister addressed it in his comments, this is the first time that we've had a US president pay a wartime visit to Israel and that this, this kind of support is absolutely unprecedented. Prime Minister Netanyahu thanked President Biden saying that you haven't just shown us your support with words, you've also uh, uh, backed it with action. As we know, we have the USS Gerald Ford, this is the largest aircraft carrier off our shores, followed shortly by the USS Dwight Eisenhower, uh, well equipped with all kinds of teams. We are soon to be joined by British naval vessels and British surveillance planes. The Chancellor of Germany, Olaf Scholz, also said that uh, Germany is prepared to send Israel some hardware. So uh, the, the civilized world understand the veracity, the importance of backing and supporting Israel during its war against Hamas. 
Now, just a short while ago, Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Biden concluded their one-on-one -on -one meeting. It went for a, a significant length of time. And the president said that, you know, we stand with Israel. Israel represents freedom and democracy. The U.S. stands resolutely with the state of Israel. Meanwhile, Hamas's spokesman earlier today blamed Israel and the West for the war in Gaza. Obviously, they forgot the significantly brutal and depraved events of the 7th of October. And lastly, before uh, we go, uh, we do have to announce uh, something that uh, has personally horrified me, and that is that South Africa's Foreign Minister Naledi Pandor had a phone call with the, the leaders of Hamas, where they appealed to South Africa for humanitarian aid. Uh, I found it absolutely shocking that not only uh, is South Africa speaking to Hamas, but also that the foreign minister didn't use that opportunity to press for the release of hostages and condemn Hamas for their brutality. The um, reason was given or the excuse given by uh, Durko, the uh, Department of International Relations and Cooperations, was that they speak to all interlocutors and, and they condemn the violent actions against Israeli citizens. We're still trying to wrap our heads around that, uh, that uh, South Africa wants the bastion of um, uh, equality and the Rainbow Nation is now signing up more and more to be an ally with pariah states and terror entities. So that brings me to the end of today's edition of the Israel Brief. Just a short while ago, there was a big salvo of rockets fired towards the southern city of Besheva and surrounds. There are still rockets being fired towards Israel. And uh, just a reminder, you can check out our website at www.layoftheland.online. Our YouTube channel is at The Israel Brief. If you like us, subscribe to us. Let's get those subscriptions up. Can we pass a thousand? Let's see if we can do that. Our uh, Facebook page is at Lotl site, at L-O-T-L -L site, S-I-T-E. And we're on X at Lay of the Land 5. I'm Raleen Marks. This is the Israel Brief. I'll chat to you guys tomorrow.